In this video I'm going to talk about the stepper motors which drive the different axes and their associated limit switches for homing. Homing a CNC machine at startup is probably the most important part of what makes a CNC machine a versatile tool. The process defines the G53 machine positions for the different axes setting the maximum and minimum locations. Those provide a reference point for all other movements. If for some reason the limit switches are adjusted, this can have a knock-on effect on subsequent movements, work coordinates and macros. In my case, the macros which would be affected include locating the stationary probe and the dual y-axis homing which squares the y-axis to the x-axis. When the machine turns on, the LED lights on the proximity limit switches also remain on. These are normally closed sensors, although normally open ones will also work. When a metal object is detected in front of a sensor, the circuit is open and the light goes out. This is read as a signal by the relay module, which I'm using to create a logical connection between the proximity sensors and the controller. The relays are held in an energized state while powered, and those also go out when the proximity sensors are triggered. The pins from the controller for the different axes are wired via the normally open and common relay terminals which when everything is powered is closed. In essence, at all three points, when the sensor is not triggered, the lights remain on, and when they are triggered, the lights turn off. Before you can home and move the axes, you need to set up the stepper drivers and limit switches in the config.g file within the system directory. To set up the steppers, you will need to address the following commands with the relevant information based on your stepper motors and the CNC machine's configurations. M569 sets the motor's drive direction. P refers to the drive, while S0 or S1 refers to the direction of which there are two, either clockwise or anticlockwise. I'll briefly explain how to install the steppers. You will be using steppers with four wires of which there are two pairs to the motor coils. You can identify the pairs by the documentation from your supplier or by holding the exposed ends of two wires together and trying to turn the motor shaft. If you feel resistance, you have found a pair. Those are then wired to the relevant connections on the terminals, of which they are labelled 1B, 1A, 2A and 2B, or not to be. My stepper motors happen to correspond with the colours that are on the diagram, but you may find cheaper steppers do not, and the method I mentioned earlier will help in that situation. For instructions on how to crimp the terminal ends, see the first video in this series. M584 maps the drives to the axes they will be used for. Note I have two additional drives for my MOOT1 3 axis CNC machine. U is an experiment with a tangential knife, and V is the second Y axis. Drives 1 and 4 are mapped to the Y axis, and the P4 at the end there reveals the number of axes in the web interface. M350 sets the micro stepping and interpolation. The higher the microstepping, the quieter the motors will be at the expense of the torque. For CNC use, which requires high torque to overcome the resistance of cutting into materials, it's not advised to use interpolation. M906 sets the current to the drivers. See your stepper driver's documentation for the correct values. However, you typically set those to 80% within the config.g file. I'm currently using NEMA 17s for the test rig, but on my CNC machine, I'll have 3 amp motors, which I'll set to 2.4 amps or 2400 milliamps, which is the max that the Duet 2 can supply. The I value sets the motor current idle factor in percentage, which reduces the current to the motors during the machine's idle state, saving power and preventing heat buildup. M92 sets the steps per millimetre, which is what configures the rotational movement of the steppers to equate to distance moved along the axes. There are calculators online to work that out, and that depends on your lead or ball screw pitch dimensions. M566 sets the max instantaneous speed change, which affects whether your machine will rattle itself apart or become too slow when cutting curves. M203 sets the maximum speed of the stepper motors. This also sets the maximum feed rate when moving using a G0 rapid move command. This is useful to do so you don't accidentally overdrive your axes and physically damage components. M201 
sets the acceleration, of which the higher the number, the quicker the steppers get to their allotted speed. M208 sets the maximum and minimum axis travel, and the software limits within the G53 machine position. This prevents the machine from overshooting those coordinates and crashing, and depending on how you set up your homing cycle, you'll either move to the maximum or minimum, and the appropriate values are set when the limit switches are triggered. Now for the limit switches. M574 configures the end stops to the axes, so the motor and switch are linked. The number next to the axis letter refers to which end of the axis the end stop is positioned, so either 1 at the low end, or in my case 2 at the high end. S refers to the switch type, where 1 is an end stop input physically connected to the control board. P refers to the pin name, which you can find in the RepRap firmware version 3 overview. If I wanted to invert the pin, I would use an explanation mark before the name. You can read more about these and other functions in the Duet G code library, and I've only mentioned a brief range of the things you can do focusing on my particular setup, so it is worth doing additional research before you start to build your own controller. Now before I go on, I'll just make a note here that I've swapped over from the OozeNest WorkB web controls, which were last updated in 2019, to the latest Duet web controller, which now has a custom layout for CNC mode. I'm also filming these screen captures with my spare Duet controller at my flat during the lockdown in early 2021, which means I'm matching old video footage with new screen captures. So I apologize if I make any mistakes along the way, and I'll try to maintain the illusion. To home your axes, you'll need the relevant firmware macro.g files in the system directory, the full list of which can be found at the Duet3D website, which I'll link to in the description. The files called when homing include homingall.g, hominx.g, homingy.g, and hominz.g. I also have a homingu.g for my tangential knife, which I'm still working on. I'll begin with the z-axis homing cycle, which is often the first movement performed while homing a CNC machine, because this clears the spindle from the material and the wasteboard, preventing the spindle or tool from knocking and damaging anything in its way. All my homing macros begin by calling a file called condition4.g into the homing macro using a m98 command. The condition checks the status of the end stops. This is a safety feature which will prevent the machine from homing if the end stops are already triggered or if the end stops have been disconnected. I lifted this script from the Duet forum, which was posted by OND, with only a minor change to the abort message. We know from earlier that the different axes are mapped to different drive numbers. X is 0, Y is 1 and 4, 2 is 0, U is 3, and V, which is the second axis when separated during the homing cycle, is 4. While iterating across all the end stops available, if any iteration of end stops is triggered, no matter which axis is being homed, display message indicating the drive number that is triggered, and abort displaying a message containing all the drive numbers and their axis for reference. After which, G21 ensures the units are set to millimeter, and G91 swaps over to relative positioning or incremental movements. This makes all movements relative to the last. G1, H1, Z190, F1000. Perform a speed controlled move of the Z axis 190 millimeters in the positive direction with a speed of 1000 millimeters a minute and terminating the move when the end stop is triggered. Perform a speed control move of the Z axis in the negative direction at 10 millimeters at a speed of 800 millimeters a minute. Perform a second pass slowly towards the Z axis end stop. Set the current machine position to Z0. Rapid move with no specific action, clearing the proximity sensor. G90 returns to absolute positioning, which will now reference the new Z0 coordinates for movements for both the machine position and subsequent work coordinates. G4P1000 performs a dwell for one second, and M500 saves the current parameters. The other homing cycles work in a similar way, apart from homeall.g and homey.g, which includes an M584 drive mapping command. That splits the Y axis to Y and V and maps them to the drives one and four. P5 reveals all the axes in the web controller, although this is not necessary for dual axis homing to work, and it's just a visual indicator of what's going on. These are then homed individually 
and the standoff distance is worked out to square the x and y axes, which on the current machine works out 2.4 of a mil difference between the two sides of the y axis. And the important thing to remember is at the end of the homing cycle is to map the drives back together to a single y axis using drives 1 and 4. And P4 hides the v axis from the web controls. Now if I hold a metal object in front of any of the limit switches, which is simulating either the limit being triggered or a cable being damaged or something being pulled out, I can start any of the homing cycles and the condition 4.g macro is called into the homing cycles, these type of error messages will appear on screen. I can then use that message to identify the axis by the drive number and investigate. The only problem I can envisage is with the tangential knife that could be stopped at an angle where the internal proximity sensor is triggered and if the machine starts up, the code in condition 4 will interpret that as an error. But I'm filming currently on my kitchen table away from my CNC machine, so that's something to think about later. Maybe I need a startup procedure to de-trigger the sensor for the U-axis. Anyway, this video has dragged on long enough, and I think I'll end now with a montage of the stepper motors homing. I'll leave some useful links in the description below. And finish by saying thank you to my patrons for their support and to remind you to sacrifice a thumb which basically means press the like button and help me appease the pesky algorithm gods stay safe and you'll catch me in the next one